Exorcism, Wikipedia Audio Exorcism is the religious or spiritual practice of evicting demons or other spiritual entities from a person, or an area, they are believed to have possessed. Depending on the spiritual beliefs of the exorcist, this may be done by causing the entity to swear an oath, performing an elaborate ritual, or simply by commanding it to depart in the name of a higher power. The practice is ancient and part of the belief system of many cultures and religions. Requested and performed exorcism began to decline in the United States by the 18th century and occurred rarely until the latter half of the 20th century when the public saw a sharp rise due to the media attention exorcisms were getting. There was a 50% increase in the number of exorcisms performed between the early 1960s and the mid-1970s. In Christianity, exorcism is the practice of casting out demons. In Christian practice the person performing the exorcism, known as an exorcist, is often a member of the Christian church, or an individual thought to be graced with special powers or skills. The exorcist may use prayers and religious material, such as set formulas, gestures, symbols, icons, amulets, etc. The exorcist often invokes God, Jesus and slash or several different angels and archangels to intervene with the exorcism. Protestant Christian exorcists most commonly believe the authority given to them by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the source of their ability to cast out demons. Christianity In general, people considered to be possessed are not regarded as evil in themselves, nor wholly responsible for their actions because possession is considered to be unwilling manipulation by a demon resulting in harm to self or others. Therefore, practitioners regard exorcism as more of a cure than a punishment. The mainstream rituals usually take this into account, making sure that there is no violence to the possessed, only that they be tied down if there is potential for violence. In Catholic Christianity, Exorcisms are performed in the name of Jesus Christ. A distinction is made between a formal exorcism, which can only be conducted by a priest during a baptism or with the permission of a bishop, and prayers of deliverance which can be said by anyone. The Catholic rite for a formal exorcism, called a major exorcism, is given in section 11 of the ritual Romanum. The ritual lists guidelines for conducting an exorcism, and for determining when a formal exorcism is required. Priests are instructed to carefully determine that the nature of the affliction is not actually a psychological or physical illness before proceeding. In Catholic practice the person performing the exorcism, known as an exorcist, is an ordained priest. The exorcist recites prayers according to the rubrics of the rite, and may make use of religious materials such as icons and sacramentals. The exorcist invokes God specifically the name of Jesus as well as members of the Church Triumphant and the Archangel Michael to intervene with the exorcism. According to Catholic understanding, Several weekly exorcisms over many years are sometimes required to expel a deeply entrenched demon. Beliefs and practices pertaining to the practice of exorcism are prominently connected with Hindus. Of the four Vedas, the Atharva Veda is said to contain the secrets related to exorcism, magic, and alchemy. The basic means of exorcism are the mantra and the yajna used in both Vedic and Tantric traditions. Vaishnava traditions also employ a recitation of names of Narasimha and reading scriptures, notably the Bhagavata Purana allowed. According to Jita Mahatmaya of Padma Purana, reading the 3rd, 7th and 9th chapter of Bhagavad Gita and mentally offering the result to departed persons helps them to get released from their ghostly situation. Curtain, 
continuous playing of mantras, keeping scriptures and holy pictures of the deities in the house, burning incense offered during a puja, sprinkling water from holy rivers, and blowing conches used in puja are other effective practices. It is also believed that, praying to Lord Hanuman, gives the best result. It is also mentioned in the Hanuman Kalisa. It is believed that just uttering the name of Lord Hanuman makes the evil forces and devils tremble, in fear. The main Puranic resource on ghost and death related information is Garuda Purana. A complete description of birth and death and also about the human soul are explained in Kat Upanishad, a part of Yajurveda. A summary of this is also available as a separate scripture called Nightaka. In Islam, exorcism is called Rukya. It is used to repair the damage caused by seer or black magic. Exorcisms today are part of a wider body of contemporary Islamic alternative medicine called Al-Tib al-Nabawi. Catholic Church Islamic exorcisms consist of the treated person lying down, while a sheikh places a hand on a patient's head while reciting verses from the Quran, but this is not mandatory. The drinking or sprinkling of holy water may also take place along with applying of clean non-alcohol based perfumes, called as itter. Specific verses from the Quran are recited, which glorify God and invoke God's help. In some cases, the Adhan is also read, as this has the effect of repelling non-angelic unseen beings or the jinn. The Islamic prophet Muhammad taught his followers to read the last three surahs from the Quran, Surat al-Iqlas, Surat al-Falak and Surat an nas Josephus reports exorcisms performed by administering poisonous root extracts and others by making sacrifices. In more recent times, Rabbi Yehuda Fetia authored the book Minchat Yehuda, which deals extensively with exorcism, his experience with possessed people, and other subjects of Jewish thought. The book is written in Hebrew and was translated into English. The Jewish exorcism ritual is performed by a rabbi who has mastered practical Kabbalah. Also present is a minion, who gather in a circle around the possessed person. The group recites Psalm 91 three times, and then the rabbi blows a shofar. The shofar is blown in a certain way, with various notes and tones in effect to shatter the body so that the possessing force will be shaken loose. After it has been shaken loose, the rabbi begins to communicate with it and ask it questions such as why it is possessing the body of the possessed. The minion may pray for it and perform a ceremony for it in order to enable it to feel safe, and so that it can leave the person's body. Hinduism Islam in Taoism, exorcisms are performed because an individual has been possessed by an evil spirit for one of two reasons. The individual has disturbed a ghost, regardless of intent, and the ghost now seeks revenge. An alive person could also be jealous and uses black magic as revenge thereby conjuring a ghost to possess someone. Members of the Fashi both Chinese ritual officers and priests ordained by a celestial master, perform Chinese rituals, in particular, exorcisms. Judaism Taoism Buddhism Scientific view Exorcism and mental illness Historically, Taoist exorcisms include chanting, physical movements, and praying as a way to drive away the spirit. Rituals such as these occur during festivals. Rituals such as these are considered of low order during these festivals. They are more for entertainment than a necessity during festivals. 
the leaders of the exorcisms create a dramatic performance to call out the demons so the village can once again have peace. The leaders strikes themselves with a sharp weapon so they bleed. Blood is considered to be a protector, so after the rituals, the blood is blotted with a tissue and put on the door of houses as an act of protection against evil spirits. The ritual of the exorcising ghost day is part of Tibetan tradition. The Tibetan religious ceremony Gyutar, literally offering of the 29th, is held on the 29th of the 12th Tibetan month, with its focus on driving out all negativity, including evil spirits and misfortunes of the past year, and starting the new year in a peaceful and auspicious way. United Kingdom The temples and monasteries throughout Tibet hold grand religious dance ceremonies, with the largest at Padala Palace in Lhasa. Families clean their houses on this day, decorate the rooms and eat a special noodle soup called guthuk. In the evening, the people carry torches, calling out the words of exorcism. Demonic possession is not a psychiatric or medical diagnosis recognized by either the DSM-5 or the ICD-10. Those who profess a belief in demonic possession have sometimes ascribed to possession the symptoms associated with physical or mental illnesses, such as hysteria, mania, psychosis, Tourette's syndrome, epilepsy, schizophrenia, or dissociative identity disorder. Additionally, there is a form of monomania called demonomania or demonopathy in which the patient believes that he or she is possessed by one or more demons. The illusion that exorcism works on people experiencing symptoms of possession is attributed by some to placebo effect and the power of suggestion. Some cases suggest that supposedly possessed persons are actually narcissists or are suffering from low self-esteem and act demonically possessed in order to gain attention. Within the scientific community, the work of psychiatrist M. Scott Peck, a believer in exorcism, generated significant debate and derision. Much was made of his association with the controversial Malachi Martin a Roman Catholic priest and a former Jesuit, despite the fact that Peck consistently called Martin a liar and a manipulator. Other criticisms leveled against Peck included claims that he had transgressed the boundaries of professional ethics by attempting to persuade his patients to accept Christianity. One scholar has described psychosurgery as neurosurgical exorcisms, with trepanation having been widely used to release demons from the brain. Meanwhile, another scholar has equated psychotherapy with exorcism. In the UK, exorcisms are increasing. They happen mainly in charismatic and Pentecostal churches, and also among communities of West African origin. Frequently, the people exorcised are mentally disturbed. Mentally ill people are sometimes told to stop their medication as the church believes prayer and slash or exorcism is enough. If psychiatric patients do not get better after exorcism, they may believe they have failed to overcome the demon and get worse. Notable Exorcisms and Exorcists Works Cited